Hello, mathy people out there. Today we're going to be proving what are called the addition formulas for sine and cosine. So specifically, we want to learn what is sine of a plus b and what is cosine of a plus b in terms of the sines and cosines of these angles separately. And using this diagram, we can prove that. Okay, here I've got a nice right triangle, and on top of that, I've got another right triangle. The first triangle has an angle A down here, the second triangle has an angle B, and the second triangle also has a hypotenuse of 1. Okay, now before we start with that, um, let's just get a little refresher on, you know, what the definitions of sine and cosine are really quick. We're going to need this when we do this proof. Remember that cosine of theta, right, is defined as x over r for a triangle like this. Sine of theta is defined as y over r. So if I just solve these two equations for x and y, I can figure out what my legs are. y is equal to r sine theta. x is equal to r cosine theta. This is useful. If we know the angle and we know the hypotenuse, then this gives us the other two sides of the triangle. It's got to be a right triangle, but the other two sides of the triangle right away. So we're going to need this when we do our proof. Okay. So let's start. Well, if I know that the side of this triangle up here, the hypotenuse of this upper triangle is 1, and I know this angle is B, I know that this side up here, this leg on the top triangle, is sine of B. And I know that this other leg, this long leg down here, is cosine of B. Well, if I know that the hypotenuse of the lower triangle is cosine of B, then I can figure out the other two legs, right? Basically doing what we just went over, which is take the hypotenuse, multiply by sine of this angle right here, and that's this side, cosine of B, sine of the angle. Similarly, this leg down here is cosine of b times the cosine of the angle. Okay. And that is this entire, that's this entire thing right here. There we go. Okay, I'm, hope you, I'm hoping you're with me so far. We have to make this diagram a little bit more complicated, but it's not too bad, so just follow what I'm doing. I'm going to take a straight line and go straight down from this point, the very top there. Okay, nice vertical line. It's going to reach the bottom here at a nice right angle. I'll draw in a little right angle symbol. And then one more line. There won't be any more lines, I promise. Go draw a line right here, which meets this line at a right angle and intersects at this vertex point right here. There we go, nice horizontal line. Right from that point. It's a little bit small. Hopefully you can see it. I'll put in the right angle, so we know that's also a right triangle. Okay. Well, notice this angle A, and notice that this little segment here is parallel to this little segment, well not little, this big segment here is parallel to this little segment right here. And this angle is A. Well, we have an alternate interior angle right here. If you can see where my arrow is. That angle is also A, so I'll just label that as A. If this angle is A and this full angle is 90 degrees, then this angle must be 90 minus A. And then if you look at this triangle right here, this is 90, this is 90 minus A, 
we now know what this angle is up here. That angle is also A. Okay, so it turns out that this angle up here is the same as this angle down here. So let's focus on this triangle right now. It's got a hypotenuse sine B, and my angle is A. We're using the same trick that we've been using before to get like this side and this side and this side. Here's the hypotenuse, here's the angle, this is the adjacent side. So I know that this side is sine of B cosine of A. That's this side from here right to here. Well, we also know what the, line, what the length of this line segment is. That one's a tough one to label. I'm just going to put it over here. That's the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. I'll draw a little arrow there so we know what that is. There we go. That was the length of this right here. Sine B sine A is the length of this side. Well, we're actually just about ready to, to give our proof. We're basically done. One thing to notice is that what is the length of this big segment right here? Well, if you see this triangle, right, here's the three sides, right, like that. It has a hypotenuse of 1, an angle of A plus B. The length of this side must be sine of A plus B, which is what we want, right? This angle is A plus B, hypotenuse of 1. The length of this long line here must be sine of A plus B. But we've already broken up this tall thing into a little piece here, given by this, and a piece here, given by this. We can simply add sine B cosine A, cosine B sine A, and we're going to get our formula. Now typically these are written a little bit differently. So I'm going to start with this one first and just reverse the order there. So I get sine of A cosine of B, okay, plus this line segment, which is sine of B cosine of A. We've just proved our first formula. Now how do I get cosine of A plus B? Well, again, big triangle, hypotenuse 1, cosine of A plus B is the length of the line segment from here to here, right? Because that's the leg of this big triangle with a hypotenuse of 1. Well, I can just take this entire length and then subtract this little length, which is the same as this, which is this. Okay, hopefully you're following that. So the answer here is cosine of A, cosine of B. That's this length. I just flipped the order. Doesn't make any difference. Then I need to subtract this one right here. And again, I'll just put in a different order. Sine of A, sine of B. And there we go. We've just proven these two formulas. Hope you enjoyed this video proof.